Hello and welcome to Vintage Magazine Mondays, where we're going to travel through time via Rod and Custom Magazine, starting off in the 50s and traveling all the way through the 60s, doing monthly issues on a weekly basis. So we're going to go through time at approximately a 4x speed. So let's get into this one. Again, we're starting off November of 1956. Why is that? Well, because this is the first issue that Rod and Custom started featuring the model car kit stuff. I am primarily a model car channel, so that's that's where we're going to start there. We'll be able to kind of follow along uh, parallel universe with the one to ones and the model car kits via Rod and Custom magazine. There's a lot to go over in this issue, so let's get into it. Special section with the 49 to 51 Fords, hundreds of custom ideas, a little how to on filling your own hood. We have record results from the Bonneville Trials and National Dregs, and of course, featuring one of those 49 to 51 Fords on the cover in candy apple red got some nice radius wheel wells wide whites looking really sharp there but like i said we got a lot in this issue so let's get into it starting off on the inside cover again is featuring some of that model car stuff give you guys a nice look at this ad it's fun to customize with Ravel model kits interesting to see how they are kind of advertising them to the one-to-one -one customizers using them as templates and experimental kits for your one-to-one -one and really not even talking to them as far as kids or toys so again a little read up on that a little pricing and the models featured there Ford hot rod for 70 cents all models scaled to 3 ace, which is a 132nd scale. Again, we got all of these 132nd scale kits. Kind of interesting, as I am currently working on the Continental Mark II as we go. I've built the Cadillac Eldorado and hope to build them all in the future. Very cool, Ed. This Autorama gift set, uh, absolutely a grail piece. Very hard to find. Very cool. This is actually the second release of it. There was a 55 version that featured the Cadillac instead of the Continental. Again, a uh, very cool historic piece here. Again, kicking off in 1956. A little Continental kit there. Like I said, we got a lot to cover in those. There is a, approximately, I think it's a nine-page featured article on the model car stuff. So when we get there, of course, we'll take a look at that. Here is your contents. If you guys want a little heads up of what's coming here. Again, that customizing in miniatures article. It's a pretty cool read. Look forward to sharing that with you guys. Starting line. Honest Charlie's. Very popular ad in the Rod and Customs. Why well, just tinker? Be a full-time auto mechanic letters to the editors i'll try to pan through some of this stuff so if you actually want to pause and read go ahead you know try to film in high quality go slow enough so you can read at your own pace but we're going to mainly look at you know pictures and headlines things like that but give you a nice taste of what's going on Rod and custom coverage, Ford has been known to offer to the public at various times throughout the company's colorful career, certain models which refuse to decline in popularity, best of all perhaps are the famed T's, then the A's, most recently the fine 36 models, the 40's and the 49's, the fatter body style carried from 49 through 51 with few outward changes, still manages to be a top color for customizing according to recent survey by Rod and custom here then is our tribute to these models and they are still very iconic today There's another great look at i believe that is our cover car there going in some more beautiful shots no matter what restyling route you take on the now aging 59 or 49 to 51 ford you're going to come up with a classic custom Again, that's a really good looking version there. Getting lots of great pictures. The features. We've got a ton of these shoebox Fords to look at. 
You'll have to whet your appetite no matter the styling you like. Nice simple design. Wire wheels and skirts. You know, customized roof. Some cool side trim there. Ooh, was there a Ford near future? Even featuring four doors. Got to focus in. I'm going to read the captions as we go. Nice front end shot. Sharp looking unit. And as it says, we have more on the next page. Nice two tone. Photo above is a two door with chopped top, thin chrome strip outlining black panel from otherwise white car. Top through lowered Bose, a larger than stock rear window taken from a 52 Ford. Like the coupe immediately opposite, this Ford is stripped of handles, ornaments, but the stock side strip remains. It is being only somewhat shortened. So we have business coupe model there. Features restyled chrome on that one. More nice chrome trim. Looks like from a Tri 5 Chevy added to the shoebox. Interesting tail lights. Another two tone one. Valley Custom Shop puts talents to work on this 50. Came up with a fine example of the restylist art. Drill is bar stock protruding far enough to act as a bumper. Colors are white and dark purple. Which that's a sharp unit. Another white coupe. Simple lowered skirts. Shape of handles. We got one featuring radius to wheel wells. More simple design. A Victoria side script on it. A little more custom, slick rod. I should try to catch those texts if you want to. A lot to read if I had to read them all. Really great shots. Lots of uh, eye candy and ideas to suit. That one's pretty unique with the kind of bumper guards as the bumpers. Split two toning, looks more like a Buick trim there. Both of those, and another there. That's definitely a Buick side script. Really good looking cars. From the angle, looks like that one's been sectioned out. Hardest customizing project is sectioning, but the slab side of Ford practically begs for this treatment. Many have been treated thus, the five illustrated being only a very few of the total. So yes, it is section Ford. Definitely one of my favorite features on a shoebox Ford, getting it sectioned down. And of course the grills given to the 4951 Fords. So 53 Chevys there, Merc Grill, all sorts of variety. Pretty plain canvas to work on. Everything looks pretty good on those shoe boxes. And more yet. Lots of 4951 stuff for you guys. It's like some uh, 55 Chevy trim there on the grills. Packard components. Very cool look. What was going on? Mid 50s. Another look at those taillight treatments. A little bit of everything. Very cool. Even basically deleting your taillights. Cool look. 
And now on to more. We have a Fire Dome Deuce. So we know it's under the hood just by the name of it. Very cool looking 32. Of course, there's our power plant. Big 53 DeSoto. Hangs over the frame in three window 32. Four pots on the Y end manifold. Deliver Go Juice to power hungry Fire Dome. 103 inch standing quarter. Well, 103 in the standing quarter on gas, ripping right along in 1956. Familiar 32 coupe of Dearborn Heritage gets its oats from new overhead valve engine by DeSoto. Very cool. 22 year old college student. Just want to read a little more on him. Great shots. Tire for front suspension is plated for appearance and ease of cleaning. Another shot of that engine. Great looking exhaust coming out of there. This whole package is done right. Owner builder chats with local constabulary on construction of the Deuce Coupe. Many California officers are avid fans and former rotters who like to keep up with the latest ideas. Definitely trying to promote uh, good community vision. Interior of car is done in pleated brown plastic by Autobed. Stuart Warner dials grace this dash as in many other well-constructed rods. Floor shift lever is connected to a Lincoln box. Custom South America style. Look at that one. Very cool. Next month, Roger Huntington begins a series on elapsed time versus top speed. A reading must for all drag racing fans. Again, sign of the times when they were still just going by top speed at that time. Kind of a carry over from the Salt Lakes racing. Here we have our customizing in miniature uh, featured article on the scale model kits. In response to a veritable deluge of mail requesting an insight into the customizing of scale model cars, Rod and Custom presents an, a conclusive report on the changes possible, how they are performed, the tools and equipment necessary, and the whys of exciting new hobby. Very cool read. Need to see kind of what is the same, what has changed, and all the techniques inside. There's a lot of text here, so if you guys want to read, by all means, try to get this in focus and pause for you. So you guys can catch it and read it. Very interesting article. Again, kind of uh, really talking about the early days of scale modeling, especially customizing, which I love. Again, some more of the customizing in miniature. Again, like the, the cover ad, we are featuring those Ravel 132nd scale kits. We got the Cadillac, we got the Mercury, again the Cadillac there. Looks like the back end of the Buick. Very cool there. There's the kits. Showing you what you start with in your box from Ravel. 56 parts. Let's try to get this. In camera for you. Definitely a neat little how to for customizing. There's that 48th scale, I think it is, 56 Ford pickup that they put out at the same time. If you look at the pictures, Merc side panel is one piece as shown below. Completed model. Top edges of fenders are cemented in later during the final assemblies. Taken during stages of body sectioning. This discloses where cut was made through panel. Amount removed was 3 sixteenths of an inch or 6 inches on a real car. Ravel's Bud Anderson used jeweler saw to section body panel. Care and forethought will assist in fitting rework pieces together. As in real car, seats must be dropped before installation and model. Here, calipers are used to check the amount taken from the seat side. 
Run Custom Stylus Winfield, oh no, it's Winland, left Anderson and Ravel's Chief Builder Hopner. Conferred during radical customizing of Merc Montclair. Special primer paint is applied around the areas that required extensive rework. After hardening, primer was sanded before painting. Body trim is chrome plated after painting of the body. Car is assembled next. The end result shown in photo right compared to the stock model. We got the stock Merc and the customized. Very well done. Again, remember these are 132nd scale kits. Very cool. I don't remember if I caught this part of the text. Let you guys read that. Again, lots of text. I want you guys to pause and read. I find it very fascinating to read all of this. Very cool to learn about the early days. New Yorker hard top was altered to resemble a 300 track car, complete with exhaust outlet just ahead of the rear wheel and roll bar. Added realism could be had by denting fender, perhaps rippled top to indicate pass rollover. Very cool. Beating up the cars, even in 1956. Up here we have the standard Ravel pickup with added tailpipes. Poses beside similar model, which in addition to lowering has been chopped and channeled. Model is treated as full-size hauler might be. Hood section amount of channeling so front fenders could remain at stock height. Remember that little guy is 148th scale, doing some cool customizing on it. Again, let your imagination run. Stock Ford convertible left as compared to body altered for ragtop racing and another during sectioning and dechroming process. A little feature there. Again, we'll pan through this. Let you guys read the how to. To the pictures stock Eldorado convertible rest below customized model fitted with chop top from a Buick Riviera body shell at right is also a CAD but has been shortened top and tarp covered pickup box tailgate was formed by bottom of stock deck lid reshaped to fill gap between fenders and below bed of Eldorado half ton really cool well detailed engines of Ravel models, mill from Cadillac Illustrated, can be interchanged between cars since 3 eighths of an inch equals one foot is standard scale across the board. Really cool. Another shot, different modifications going on. And Rod and Custom Model Car Contest kicking off their first article and announcing a model car contest got some prizes there $50 bond pretty good money in 1956 you guys want to catch that pretty cool article i was very fascinated with it been intrigued by those early model kits myself but now back to the the one-to-ones dechrome your own hood doing what they call kind of necking or nosing and decking Moving the, the chrome, basically the emblems, off the front and rear of your car. On top, off top, hard top. The lack of a convertible was a bitter pill to swallow. 53 stewed there. 
which they removed the top except they gave it a removable hard top neat handles one on each side of the top were added to aid in removing the turret when in place dude resembles the hard top stockers The 1956 records from Bonneville National Speed Trials. You guys a little pain through there. Kind of watch these as we traverse through the years. See if you guys notice any familiar names going on there. Check out the speed records and the classes. A little e-competition coupe there by the name of Mickey Thompson. Lots of uh, speed trial names in there. Now we have the 1956 records from Kansas City. National Championship Drag Races. Early drag races. First couple years of the National Championships. Cars used. Classes featured. An idea for... Period correct classing. We have a baby giant. Rather build from the ground up than merely convert. Try your hand at a baby giant. McClelland. Except we got this, uh, I don't know what to call it. Utility truck. A very unique unit. Built originally at the cost of about $6,000 or the project as a spare time hobby while recuperating from an injury. Very interesting project. Got a, a baby, a giant. Beneath the owner's nameplate on the hood is hinged panel for access to the radiator flow pipe. The polished bed was made to order of stainless. Lack of door handles reveals a sense of customizing on the owner's part. Naturally, doors are electrically operated by push buttons. Very V860 for power. From out of the 48, we get one from Minnesota. Minnesota isn't necessarily the best place to go in search of customs for the northern state's rough winters are not conducive to the lowering enthusiast's work. However, the cars up there that have gone under the torch are certainly not to be sneezed at. For instance, Norman West's 55 Olds Holiday. The McCullough blown engine sports a three-quarter cam. Mallory Ignition. Uh, sleek looking unit. Definitely love the mid-50s GMs. Under the hood with the blower. Looking lethal there. And from Iowa. It's not an accidental that this issue devoted heavily to the 4951 Fords includes one such model from faithful reader Jerry Mo Morris hailing from Iowa's Waterloo. Got a drop top. Looks like a, a Chevy grill in there. Reworked side trim. Nearly half of our 48 states already presented in the series. Readers in the states not yet covered or urged to submit their photos. And back before the, the 50, the, the white ones we will see in the future. Bahama Blue Baby. Neatly flanking the license plates or taillights from the 48 Fraser, barely discernible in the photo. White pinstriping contrasts nicely with the Bahama blue paint job on the well restored 32. A nice stockish appearing 32. Unchopped, unchanneled, the stock size cock. Pit is tastefully upholstered in Naga hide. Contrasting colors are red and white with vertical running pleats. So red, white, and blue. Five window at the lights at 90 miles an hour. A little show and go. 
here and see if you guys read a little comic if you want. Conservative grill, cute girl showing off the grill, picking some nice hardware material, they call that perforated metal, trim out your grill for a cool custom look. good to me readers car of the month we got a tri-5 convertible big radius wheel wells theme of the day sharp looking unit getting to the end i'll subscribe to rod and custom you know international motorama and motor Rev review coming up april may of 57 little articles i'm sure this one's running pretty long hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing some vintage articles and content plenty more to come again we are running all the way through the 60s maybe even to the 70s if we make it that far in the next three years we'll start it back in 1953 with that thanks for watching i hope you guys appreciate it and we'll see you next time